If you've been looking for a newer certified Toyota, come be part of the team. With inventory arriving daily, we'll help you find a vehicle that works for your lifestyle and budget. We'll continue to ensure that your next buying experience is as safe and efficient as possible. Our service center is open with easy online scheduling and a quick clean process to get you back on the road safely. Head to teamtoyota.net and be safe, be strong, be a team. Everybody, welcome to the Phillies Talk podcast presented by Team Toyota. I'm Corey Sivan. He's Jim Salisbury. He's down at uh, Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, where the Phillies played the Yankees today, and they got pasted. Though it was one of those spring training games where late in the game uh, there were pitchers in there that you know aren't really going to factor into the Phillies' 2022 plans. Uh, big news early in the morning on uh, Tuesday, Jim, with Adam Hazley being traded to the Chicago White Sox. Definitely uh, a sell low on the Phillies' part. I don't know how else you can look at this. This guy's a former first-round pick who was traded for a single-A pitcher, uh, but you know things just didn't work out with Adam Hazley. Yeah, a single-A pitcher who is sort of the prototypical, uh, the prototype of a lot of minor league pitchers we see this day. A big, big arm, hard thrower, but you know serious control and command issues. Um, to me, this was just kind of an unloading of Adam Hazley. It spoke of a Phillies organization that didn't believe he was going to um, ever live up to his lofty draft place uh, after three parts of three seasons in the majors. Um, you know, it just it just was you know pretty clear that um, you know he just wasn't going to be a difference making talent. Uh, so they just, you know, move them on for what seems like kind of one of those whatever you can get deals, uh, you know, uh, an arm that maybe you can dream on. Um, but, um, uh, you know, Adam, it frees up a 40 man roster spot, which I think was was significant um, because uh, they, they're going to probably need one here. Bryson Stotts looked very good. It might be very difficult to keep him off the roster. Um, but, you know, Adam Hazley just really never never lived up to being the eighth pick in the country uh, in the Phillies organization last year. I mean, a hardworking kid, a good guy. Um, but uh, he was, you know, sort of a – you know, everything – when they picked him, uh, it was as their analytics department was really growing and uh, as their use of analytics in the draft was really growing. And I think they put a lot of stock in uh, – I know they put a lot of stock in, the, in some of the data they had seen uh, with him. Uh, and it just never materialized at the big league level. So they just move on from him. Uh, I don't want to say they gave him away, but it looks like they gave him away because, um, uh, you know, I don't know where the upside lies on this, this reliever because we see so many of these guys, hard throwers that just don't throw strikes. So this pitcher, the, the guy from the White Sox. Uh, McKinley Moore, but uh, he'll be in the minor leagues. Adam Hazley will have a chance to play in Chicago. Uh, fresh start for a guy who, uh, you know, left the team after nine games last year for personal reasons, came back a month later, but never played in the big leagues again. And, um, I, you know, just never never seized some opportunities that he was given. So, you know, uh, he was a first-rounder in 17, and Cornelius Randolph, First rounder in 15, two outfielders. They got uh, Randolph never made it to the majors. They got very little from um, Adam Hazley in the majors. Uh, just a, you know, kind of a long line of uh, first rounders that haven't materialized for this ball club, and that's that's really really hurt when you look at the first rounders that haven't done much here. Um, but you know, on the on the flip side, maybe they free up a, a 40 man spot for Bryson Stott. He's a first rounder. Maybe you're going to get something out of him and. Um, interestingly, I think, um, um, you know, Hazley's, uh, departure was hastened. Um, like I said, they needed that 40 man, 40 man spot, but it was hastened by Mickey Moniak's improvement this spring, swinging it well. And right now he's the fifth outfielder on this team projects to break with the ball club. Yeah. When you went through that list of, uh, you know, Hazley and Cornelius Randolph a few years prior, that's a major reason why the Phillies have had to spend so much money on outfielders here over yeah. the last four years between Harper, uh, Schwarber, Castellanos, uh, ideally Hazley would McCutcheon, have been Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon. If, $50 if, million. If, if Randolph is, I mean, he was compared to Tony Gwynn coming out of high school. I mean, if he's even 
close to that. He's in left field for this team, and they don't spend fifty million on McCutcheon, so uh, they have not drafted well. And Adam Adam Hazley is just another case in point. And the other frustrating thing with Hazley is that he was supposed to be a fast riser, a guy who made an impact quickly, kind of similarly to Aaron Nola. You remember when Aaron Nola was drafted out of LSU, people thought he'd be ready pretty quickly, and he was. Uh, Nola pitched in this game here on Tuesday in Tampa against the Yankees. Uh, another shaky outing. I didn't see the game. It wasn't televised. But in three starts this spring, Nola's allowed five home runs now, which was yeah. you know, a problem last year as well. Yeah, and it's kind of the same old tune. Uh, fastballs left over the plate, and you know they're not like high octane fastballs. You know, ninety two. Uh, Marwin Gonzalez lofts it into uh, the seats in right field. He'd given up two base hits. One was a hit and run. One was kind of a jam shot. Um, preceding the home run, so two base hits preceding the home run, and then uh, Marlon Gonzalez. You know, he made a lot of good pitches, though, against them. They had all their big guns in there. They had Judge and Stanton and uh, Donaldson and LeMayhew. They had a uh, – Gallo was in there. They had a bunch of big guns in there, and he, he made good pitches. I just made that – you know, this it's like the one mistake kills Aaron Nola. The one bat in and kills Aaron Nola. Um, he's got to be really pre- precise w- with his location, or one – like one mistake really hurts. Today, just another example. Um, we've got one more start down here to, to kind of clean up those location problems. But, you know, those fastballs over the plate really hurt them last year, and they've hurt them down here. Um, you can string together four or five good innings, um, and one mistake can really hurt you. Um, needless, needless to say, he's got to eliminate those mistakes. Now, I think the offense could give him a little more room for error this year, uh, but still he needs to eliminate those mistakes. Uh, I thought the stuff has been pretty good. I thought he had a good breaking ball today. Uh, nine innings this spring, five home runs. That's troublesome. Uh, one, only one walk. It's a good sign. 11 strikeouts. That's a good sign. But just too many uh, mistakes over the plate. And that was never really an issue with Aaron Nola in the first few years. He, you know, that was one of his strengths is that, you know, pinpoint location. Uh, and it's often there. It just kind of wanes now and then, and when it does, he gets hurt. You know, you know. I wonder with certain guys over the years if you know they get too focused on trying to limit walks, and that that hurts them with the long ball. I mean, Nola. You look at the last three years; his walk rate has gotten better each year. His home run rate has gotten worse each year. I mean, I remember plenty of examples, like going back to like Cliff Lee, for example, he was always around the plate. So when he struggled, he would allow a lot of home runs. Well, Aaron Nola, he's prone to hanging that curveball. The curveball can be a, a really wicked pitch that can freeze a hitter. But if he misses the spot by slight, you know, it's going to go a long way. And at this point, the league has such a long book on him. You know, Nola really hasn't his, uh, his method of attack hasn't changed substantially over the years. I mean, I guess he's thrown the sinker a little bit less in favor of the four seamer, but hitters for the most part still know that that hook is coming. Yeah, uh, and when he executed at the, at the when he executes it at the bottom of the zone, it's a nasty pitch. Uh, but with any pitcher, when he hangs a breaking ball at this level, he's going to get hurt. You hang a changeup at this level, you're going to get hurt. Um, you know, there's so much temptation to pitch up on the zone these days, uh, but he's a guy who can still, I think, cash his paychecks at the bottom of the zone. It's when something drifts up, um, you know, knee, thigh high, that's, uh, you know, thigh high is when he gets really hurt with that fastball. Um, you know, Aaron Nola to me is, is a pure pitcher, uh, you know, change of speeds, um, w- you know, with well located stuff. He can still occasionally power you upstairs, but uh, when he makes a mistake, over the plate, uh, like a lot of guys, he's going to get hurt because he doesn't have that like unforgiving velocity that you know it might end up being peeled back. Um, he he's got to be very very precise with that location, or else you know one bad apple can spoil the whole whole bunch. Um, and like I said, maybe this year he has a little more uh, get a little more room for error with that offense. We'll see. They only got six hits today. Matt Veerling, who projects as the opening day starter, had the only extra base hit in a double. Schwarber and Castellanos were in the lineup. Segura was in the lineup. Schwarber and Castellanos had base hits. Uh, Harper, Hoskins, they were not here. Uh, they're back home tomorrow, so we'll probably, you know, see those guys um, as opening day, you know, kind of comes into into the field of view here. 
Yeah, and a uh, just a heads up that on Sunday, Jim and I are going to be doing a live Phillies Talk podcast from Clearwater after the Phillies spring training game. That's one of their final spring training games. I think it's the second to last home spring training game. So it's going to be a lot to talk about. So we'll be out there by Frenchies. Uh, if you're down in Clearwater, if you're a Phillies fan, you should come check it out. Stay after the game. Have some fun with us. We'll uh, take some questions during that podcast. It's going to be a good time. Uh, okay, yes. Jim, so you talked a little earlier about the impact of the Adam Hazley trade on a few other young Phillies, Bryson Stott being one of them, and that it opens up a 40-man roster spot potentially for him. Uh, Mickey Moniak is another guy who's a beneficiary here. He's been hitting the ball in spring training. Uh, Joe Girardi said earlier in camp that he wasn't in the mix for that center field job, but now all of a sudden it looks like Moniak has a good shot at being on the opening day roster, huh? Yeah, they only have five outfiel- outfielders on their 40-man roster at the moment now. Hey, the, you know, there's always trades that are swung late and, and waiver claims. And, you know, I do think their ears are open on uh, some trade stuff here. So you never know what could could come down. But if the, if it were to break today, he'd be their fifth outfielder. Um, and, uh, you know, given the personnel they have, he's earned it. He's earned it. I, I would – I think maybe coming into camp, um, if they – you know, if there was a chance maybe Hazley was ahead of him on the depth chart, but, you know, Mickey outplayed him and um, showing more confidence. Um, you know, he is improving. It's not like improvement like, you know, this way, like launch angle improvement, you know, 45 degrees. It's, it's slow and steady improvement where I think Hazley kind of was looking like he had leveled off. And I think that's probably why Mickey, they made the decision um, to, to part with Hazley uh, and and continue on with Mickey. That Mickey is still inching forward, inching upward. Um, it might not last long uh, if he makes the opening day roster because Herrera, I don't think it's going to be a long time coming back from that oblique. Um, but you know, it's, it if he does break with the team, it's a feather in his cap, he, in Mickey Moniak's cap. He's worked very hard. He's been very open to coaching with Kevin Long, the new hitting coach. He has moved closer to the plate. They believe that has unlocked his hips more. And in his last, uh, I wrote it down, his last, um, what, five games, he has three home runs and two doubles. Uh, so he's swinging it pretty good. Um, we'll, I think we'll see Matt Veerling as the opening day center fielder. Joe has mentioned that maybe it could be a platoon because there's that left-right balance. Um, you know, I don't know about that. A week ago, <laughs> Moniak wasn't really even in the picture in center field, but I do think he's their fifth outfielder. Uh, and, and I do think, you know, with that comes opportunity to continue to um, show people you, you're getting better. Um, and, you know, unless they make a trade or something, it looks like he lines up to be on the opening day roster. Um, not sure how much he's going to play, um, but, you know, it, it, I'm sure for, in his, you know, his mind is a lot better than than being in the minor leagues. Yeah, and to put in perspective, you know, Moniak is actually seven months younger than Bryson Stott, who was drafted three years later than him. That's the difference between getting drafted out of high school and getting drafted out of college. Mm-hmm. Moniak turns 24 in mid-May, so, you know, he, he still could potentially be unlocking some more power, specifically power, because when he was drafted, you remember the kid was like stringy and yeah. uh, that really wasn't part of his game. Yeah, he he um he is getting stronger and he's kind of becoming a man. Um, you know, he's been under a uh, man. He's been under a, a bright, bright, intense glare because he was the first overall pick in the country, and that happens. And, um, you know, it was, it's 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 a heavy, heavy label for a guy, and you know, I, I don't think he's ever going to profile as a one-one and, and have the career that other one-ones have had. Uh, but I, I think he needs to forget about that and just kind of be himself and and say to himself, you know, I'm I'm just gonna be the best I can be. And and and, and if he keeps improving, you know, maybe he's a he's a big leaguer and maybe he's an extra guy or maybe he's a um, he's a starter on a on maybe a second division team and maybe he improves enough that he's a starter on a on a on a first division team. Uh, he just needs to forget about the the label of being the one one and living up to all that. And just go out, go out and, and get better every day, and uh, and that seems like kind of what he's doing this spring. All right, Jim. Well, the next two games are on our air. Uh, that is Wednesday and Thursday. 
Wednesday is Kyle Gibson. Thursday is Zach Eflin. We talked a little bit about Eflin the other day, just about you know the, the road back from his knee surgery and how he got emotional after that last start, just thinking about all the things that he had gone through during that near year long process. Kyle Gibson's one of those like you know steady, boring veterans that you don't really hear too much from one way or the other. How's he looked this spring? Healthy, which is you know the important thing. Like you said, he's a veteran, sort of a back-end starter, a very dependable uh, fifth guy. Uh, you just need him healthy and giving you innings. And, and last year with the Phillies, he was kind of – when they first got him for a month or so, he's like a quality start machine. I, mean, I think you'd take a, a very similar season uh, to that. Just, you know, steady, hold down that fifth spot um, and, um, you know, and, and see what happens. But So, you know, he'll, he'll be on the mound there. Um, on uh, on Wednesday over in Clearwater and uh, Alec Bohm played third base today. He he had uh, he was zero for two with a walk, and uh, that still that has become the big camp drama. Who's going to be the third baseman, Stott or Bohm? And uh, you know that could be right going right down to the wire. And Joe indicated today that he will see Stott again at third base. I wonder if we might see him in that game in Clearwater tomorrow or maybe, maybe uh, you know, Wednesday or maybe even Thursday. But uh, that drama and that competition is uh, ongoing and um, it's, it's looking like it's going to be hard to keep Stott off this roster. I don't, you know, how that impacts Bohm. It's hard for me to see them carrying Bohm as a reserve player at, you know, what, 24 years old. He needs to play every day. Um, but then you you know you risk shattering his confidence, uh, send him to Triple A. But then his confidence already uh, looks like it's probably not in a good spot uh, after last year and after a tough spring. But a um, few more few more days in camp for him to to make a run here and maybe hold off Bryson Stott. It just seems like all these former number one picks are are sort of getting all the attention these last few days. Hazley was the number one pick. He's traded. Moniak's number one pick. He's played well. Uh, fifth outfielder, looking like he's going to make the team. Stott has been a real bright spot this spring. Um, coming hard, pushing hard for a spot on that opening day roster. And Bohm was a former number one pick, first round pick of the Phillies. And, um, you know, he is uh, his status for the opening day roster, where he's going to open, very much uncertain. So, um, certainly some storylines here as camp is winding down. Yeah, it's four guys with intertwining presence and futures, really, uh, with the Phillies and beyond. Thank you very much, Jim. So that's going to do it for this Phillies Talk podcast. Reminder again that we are doing a live podcast on Sunday at Clearwater after the game. Uh, so make sure to be on the yeah. lookout for that. As well. It's going to be fun. I'll be out there. I'll be the tall, handsome guy. Yeah? You going to get a couple drinks in you before we start, Jim? What do you think? No, no. But I'm just telling the fans I will be the tall, handsome guy. I'm <laughs> I on. think you're allowed to. I'm not sure. I'm on, I got to ask I'm on, our bosses on that. I'm on duty. I'm on duty. That's, that's right. All right. Always on duty. Appreciate that. Look, season opener is 10 days away. There isn't much camp left. So this is really the uh, you know the nitty-gritty here, the final week or so coming up of Philly's camp. Thanks a lot for listening. Catch you tomorrow.